Signal gasoline. Let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, to rent danger. I am The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. When in the editorial offices of the Cincinnati Gazette, the news was received that Killer Carter, the gang murderer, had escaped from the penitentiary in Columbus, and that he had been at large for 24 hours. It was decided that Danny Pearson, star reporter, was to be sent up to the Capitol to cover the manhunt that was sure to follow. Danny borrowed a car from Clem Tracy, the rewrite man, and headed north late on Friday afternoon. Car trouble held him up, and at 1 o'clock he was still far from his destination. He was getting too sleepy to drive. So when he saw the tourist sign in front of the lonely farmhouse, he made his decision. He'd stop, get a few hours of sleep, and continue into Columbus in the early hours of morning. He pulled in the lane, parked the car, and went up onto the porch. It took a few moments to rouse anyone, but finally the door opened, and there stood a woman. What do you want? Uh, good evening. I was driving along the road looking for a place to stay for the night, and I... I saw your tourist sign out front, so I thought I'd stop and see if you had any room. Why don't you drive on to the city? Well, I'm too tired to drive that distance tonight. I'm afraid I'd fall asleep at the wheel. You do have a room, don't you? I guess so. Cost you two dollars in advance. Oh, that's all right. And I don't serve any meals here. Well, I'm not hungry, and I'll be leaving in the morning before breakfast. All right, come in. Uh, is it okay to leave my car in the driveway here? It'll be safe there. Nobody will steal it. Come in. She certainly isn't very friendly, Danny, is she? But a room is a room, and it'll be nice and quiet here for the night. The house is large and dingy and eerily quiet. Almost too quiet. Here it is. You'll find everything neat and clean. There's a bathroom to the right of the bed and plenty of towels and soap. Oh, thank you. Looks fine. Did you leave your luggage in the car? Uh, no, I don't have any luggage with me. I'm traveling light. Well, I guess anyone who drives an expensive car like yours can do anything he likes. <laughs> I'm going to bed myself right away, so if there's anything else you want, you'd better think of it now. Uh, well, thanks, but there's nothing else I need. Good night, Mrs. Good night. Oh, fine. Your hostess is hospitable, isn't she? But don't worry about it. People are sometimes like that on the farm. Not used to talking much. They prefer action because actions speak louder and longer than words. And the bed is soft and comfortable. That's the main thing. Just made for your night's rest. Who's there? I said, who's there? Oh, hello. Who are you? My name is, is Claire Monroe. Well, Claire, do you make a habit of walking into strange men's rooms in the middle of the night? I, I want to talk to you. Huh? What are you so nervous about? I'm afraid she'll find me in here. She? The lady who showed you the room. Well, why don't you leave? Because I have to talk with you. Okay, go ahead, talk. I don't know where to start. Just tell me that you're lonesome. You don't have any excitement on the farm. You're looking for something to do. It's an old routine. Oh, it's nothing like that. I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but I've got to ask you. Will you take me away with you when you go? Me? 
Why should I? Because I have to get away from here. I never want to see this house again as long as I live. Why don't you just run away? You don't need me. Because I don't have a car and I don't have any money. My mother would have me picked up by the police. She'd tell them I wasn't of age. Well, are you? I'm 23 years old, but I can't prove it. Why not? Because I'm an adopted child and I don't know where I was born. And my mother... Call that lady my mother. She'd lie about my age just to keep me from going away. Well, how do I know you're of age? Look at me. Do I look 17? No, I'll have to admit you don't. I know I'm 23 years old, but she won't let me go. Well, why do you want to run away? Because, because that lady, my foster mother, last night, she murdered my foster father. <laughs> Whistler fans, we members of the cast certainly owe you a great big thanks tonight. In fact, two of them. Two weeks ago, you'll recall, we asked a favor of you. Asked if you'd be kind enough to drop in on the folks who are bringing you the Whistler, your signal gasoline dealer, and tell him how you like this program. Well, since then, signal gasoline dealers all the way from Canada to Mexico have been telling us how many of you stopped at their station and expressed enthusiasm for the Whistler. So, naturally, we of the cast are mighty happy and mighty grateful to you. Oh, but that's only the half of it. You see, during the past month, the popularity of the Whistler has continued to increase so much that now, according to the latest radio popularity survey, more people listen to the Whistler than to any other West Coast program. Yes, the Whistler is now way out in front. So, for your loyalty, thanks again to all of you from all of us. And now, back to the Whistler. Danny Pearson had driven up from Cincinnati looking for a murderer, but he hadn't expected to find one so soon nor to find another one than the one he was looking for. But you never know what you'll find when you stop at a lonely farmhouse where they take in tourists, Danny. You lie there in your bed as a good-looking young girl asks your protection from her murdering foster mother. If this is a gag, it's a pretty rugged one. Look, baby, let's break this up. I don't feel like playing games. I gotta get some sleep. You don't believe me, but I'm telling you the truth. Ever since they adopted me, they've done nothing but fight with one another. You've seen my mother. You can tell how cold and strong she is. Well, my father was just as weak as she is strong. She bullied him for years, mostly because he didn't make a lot of money. All she cares about is money. And because we never had any, she hates everything and everybody, especially my father. But how do you know she killed him? Did you see her? No, she threatened more than once to kill him, though. Last night I was in bed and I heard a shot. I wasn't sure whether or not I dreamed it, so I didn't get up to see. But when I came down this morning, she said that he had left and wasn't coming back. That he'd gone out west somewhere. That didn't sound like him because he was born and brought up in this part of the country and he wouldn't leave it for anything. Well, how in the world do you know he's dead? You know, in law, you have to produce a body. I haven't seen it, but I think I know where it is. Oh? Where? Today I was walking out on the farm and I noticed a patch of grounds up in the edge of the woods that was recently dug up. And when she saw me out there, she got very angry, ordered me into the house. I'm positive she killed him and buried him there. Oh. What are you doing in this man's room? I was just I was just talking to him, that's all. Up to your father's tricks, weren't you? You're just like him. She was just talking to him. Stealing from the guests, sneaking in to rob them or worse. No, I only wanted to talk. He was just telling me about the shows and things in the city. Get back to your room and stay there. Get if I catch you in here again, you'll wish your head stayed there. And as for you, young man, you'd better watch your step or you'll be in trouble. Oh, now, look. Wait, just... Your... Well, Danny, cozy little situation you stepped to, into, isn't it? A girl, pretty but strange, who accuses her foster mother of being a murderess. Mrs. Monroe, in turn, accuses the daughter of being like her father who evidently made a habit of robbing his tourist guests in their sleep. And how about that, Danny? She did sneak into your room. Did she come to talk, uh, as she said, 
or to rob you. And what's it all about, anyway? Who can you believe? But there is one thing you know. You're going to get up, get dressed, and get out of this place as fast as you can. That drive into town doesn't look half as far now. But just as you're about to leave, you see something slip under your door. A piece of paper, a note. Go on, Danny. Pick it up and read it. Please, you've got to believe me. I need your help. My room's across the hall. Claire. Oh, no. That's right. Crumple it up and throw it away, Danny. But wait a minute. Suppose she is telling the truth. Suppose she is in danger. You couldn't go off and leave her like this. Especially not as pretty a girl as Claire. Claire? Claire? Yes? It's me, Danny. Danny Pearson. Don't put on a light. Get dressed and come on with me. I am dressed. Oh, come on. Where are we going? You're going to show me where you think your father was buried. <laughs> So the two of you move cautiously out of the house into the darkness of the outside night. You pick up a shovel at the barn and start up the path through a field of sharp, tough hay. You keep looking over your shoulder, afraid that she might see you and come out of the house after you. Why should you be afraid of her? Well, if she killed a man once, she could do it again. Finally, you reach the woods and... Claire points out the patch of ground she thinks her mother made into a graveyard. This is it, right here. I wish we could see a little better. We'll see too well, I'm afraid. This ground isn't very hard. The shovel sinks right into it. I told you it would. If the boss could see me now. Why I'm doing it, I'll never know. Maybe it's because you like me. What? Well, what makes you think that? Because... You'd have run away. you have gone back to sleep after she took me away. Back to sleep? Hey, tell me. Is what she said about your foster father true? You mean about him stealing from the guests? Yes. Yeah. She hounded him about money so that he finally took to that to satisfy her. When tourists came, he'd wait till they were asleep and then slip in and rob them. Yeah, but didn't anybody ever catch him? Not that we ever knew of. He only took part of their money, not all of it. So they didn't miss it until they'd left. And then they had no proof. Sweet little racket. Maybe somebody caught on, and that's why he went out west. I don't think so. Because we didn't have any tourists here last night. At least not that I know of. It's possible, though, isn't it? He could have taken somebody in after you were a slave. Yes, it's possible. Then he might have tried to rob them. And they caught him, and he had to leave hurriedly. That could account for his disappearance. Yes, but... Hey, I just hit something. Oh, Danny. I got a hold of it. Here it comes. Yeah. His coat. My father's coat. Yeah? Just when I had it figured out another way. Oh, Danny, don't dig anymore. I'm getting scared. I couldn't stand to look at it. Don't dig anymore. Just fill it in. We, we found out what we wanted to find out. Please fill it in. Take it easy, baby. I don't like this any more than you do. I'm just doing it because you wanted me to. I couldn't bear to look at it. Don't dig anymore. Okay, I'll fill it in. I guess we've seen enough to know you were right. So you put the coat back where you found it, Danny, and fill in the hole again. You pat the dirt down again, just as you found it, and start back for the house. On the way back to the house, Claire holds your arm tightly. And you notice for the first time how soft and warm she is. Of course, she's trembling a little bit, but who wouldn't? Danny, will you promise to take me away tomorrow? I couldn't stand another night here. Where would I take you? What would I do with you when I got you there? I, I, I got enough to do without taking care of somebody else. Take me to some place far away, some city. I'll get a job and take care of myself. Don't worry about that. Just get me away from here. Your mother might accuse me of kidnapping. <laughs> Once she knew I was never coming back, I don't think she'd even care. Please, Danny, don't make me stay here. I'm afraid. She might even do something to me if she finds out I know what happened. You've got to help me. All right, all right. 
I'm a sucker, but I'll do it. But remember this. Once I get you out of here, you're strictly on your own. I got enough things to worry about without trying to take care of you. Oh, thank you, Danny. Thank you. Mm. We'll leave the first thing in the morning. No, then. we'll leave tonight, right now. That's awfully sad. Well, you wanted to get out of here, didn't you? I'm leaving right now. You can do what you want. Come or stay. I'll go with you. We're almost at the house. Don't even bother to go inside and get anything. She might hear you. Here, here's my car. We'll just jump in and beat it. You game? Yes. All right, now be quiet. We'll get in the car and let it roll backwards into the road. Just a minute. Surprise? You didn't think I'd let you get away, did you? Hey, put that shotgun down. It might go off. It might if you start anything. Now listen here, Mrs. Monroe. You thought I was asleep, didn't you? I had better sense. I watched you leave the house together, and I had a pretty good idea you weren't coming back. So what? What do you think you're doing with that gun? Maybe I'm protecting my daughter from a fast-talking stranger. I can take care of myself. That remains to be seen. And as for you, young man, I want you to get back in your car, drive off, and never come around here again. That's a very good idea. I'll buy that. Should have left here a long time ago. I'm going with him. You stay where you are. I'm old enough to do what I want to do. I'm going to leave, and you can't stop me. You don't think so? You wouldn't dare pull that trigger. Put your foot on that running board and try me. Hey, now, look, girl. You keep no... out of this. Maybe I'm doing this as much to protect you from her. I don't need any wait. protection. Wait. wait. Somebody's coming. The car. Yeah. Hey, looks like they're turning into your lane. Both of you get in the car, quick. Keep your lights out. Drive us in the barn. Show him where it is, pair, and shut the door after you. Pardon me, ma'am. Yes? I'm a police officer. What can I do for you? We're chasing a man. We think he came up this way. You seen any strangers around lately? Uh, what did he do? He escaped from the state penitentiary. Is he dangerous? He's a cold-blooded murderer. He escaped yesterday, and we've cracked him down to this vicinity. He's been driving stolen cars. Last we heard, he was driving a big, rich-looking convertible he picked up in Columbus. Have you seen him? No. Nobody stopped here. Didn't even see anybody passing the road. Oh. Well, he's in this neighborhood somewhere. But, say, didn't you know about this before? I mean, I thought you did when I saw you with your shotgun here. Oh. Oh, no, I... I just saw you coming up the lane, and I like to be prepared for strangers this time of night. <laughs> yeah, sure. It is pretty late. You ought to be in bed. I don't let this keep you up. You needn't worry about Carter. We'll get him. I won't worry. Oh, that's fun. Say, what are those tire tracks on the ground? Where? There, where my flashlight's pointing. They go toward the barn. Those are tractor tire marks. Oh. Well, I'm sorry that I bothered you, ma'am, but well, we've got a job to do. That's all right, mister. Wish I could have helped you some. We'll keep looking. Good night, ma'am. Okay, Al, let's go. Too bad you couldn't hear what was being said, Danny, waiting in the barn. But while the lady and the officer were talking, you had some things to say to Claire. What are we going to do now? Nothing. Just wait. You see who that is out there? A man got out of a car and he's talking to us. You know who he is? No, but he's got a flashlight. Wait a minute. Something on his coat lapel flashes. I think it's a badge. It must be the police. What are we going to do? I told you, nothing. Murder is a matter of proof. Until we can prove that your mother murdered your father, we don't have a leg to stand on. Anyway, I told you I don't want to get mixed up in it. I, I got enough to worry about myself. It's all right with me. All I want to do is get out of here. Okay. Well, just figure some way to get that gun away from your mother. Danny, the men are leaving. They're driving down to the road. She's coming back to the barn. All right, just sit tight. Wait. They're gone. Oh, well, so they're gone. I suppose you're breathing easier now. Maybe I am, and maybe I'm not. Will you stop pointing that gun at us? I will when I've finished what I'm going to do. You won't get away with shooting anybody. You ought to know. I don't intend to stand here talking all night. Now, here's what I want you to do. 
I want the both of you to get in that car and drive to Kingdom Come if you can. Never want to see either one of you again as long as I live. You've changed your mind. Oh, that suits me. Come on, Danny, let's get out of here while we've got the chance. Heaven knows what she might do. Okay, let's go. Just a minute. What? Before you go, Claire, I think there's something you ought to know about your fine new friend. I know all I want to know about him. Do you know what he really is? He's a murderer. A mur he escaped from the state prison yesterday, and the police are looking for him. They'll get him sooner or later. They always do. What do you think of that? I don't believe it. And even if it were true, I, I don't care. Where did you pick up this routine about me being a murderer? Don't listen to her, Danny. I believe you. What if I was a murderer? It wouldn't make the slightest difference in the world to me. Because, Danny, I'm in love with you. Do you know what you're saying? Yes, I know what I'm saying. Come on, let's get out of here. She gives me the jitters. Don't I, though? Okay, if that's the way everybody wants it, we'll go. I don't know what we'll do, but we'll figure out something. You better think hard. Hurry up, Danny. Yes, hurry up. You'll get caught quicker that way. All right, everybody stand where you are. Oh. Put that gun down, lady. Andy? Yes? Yeah. You and I'll go around the other side of the barn. All three of you stand over there. Dave, see if they have any guns. No guns on that one. Uh, no guns, Sheriff. No guns, huh? Good. Now, don't misunderstand me. There might not be anything wrong here, but I had to come back and take a look. It's pretty unusual for a woman to be walking around outside at 2 o'clock in the morning with a shotgun. Now, out with it. What's going on? What are you hiding in the barn for? Who's this car belong to? Come on, start talking, somebody. Here's the murderer you're looking for. There he is, and there's the car. Why didn't you tell me that when I was here before? Because I thought there might be a reward for him, and I wanted to collect it myself. She didn't because she was going to let him get away. Who are you? My daughter, Claire Monroe. All right. Now, who are you? Danny Pearson. Do you have to use that light? Keep there? him covered, Dave. What are you doing here? Stopped here for the night. They rent rooms to tourists. I don't recommend it. Where do you live? Cincinnati. What do you do for a living? Newspaper reporter. I was on my way here to cover the Carter break. Here's my press card. Now, let's see. Mm -hmm. Daniel J. Pearson, Cincinnati Gazette. How are you? All right, take it back. Where'd you get this car? I borrowed it from another reporter in Cincinnati. Okay. I told you he was the man you're looking for. Don't let him fool you with a good story. He's not fooling us, lady. He's not the man we're looking for. The guy we want is at least 45 years old. This fellow isn't even 30 yet. Well, I guess I made a mistake all around. Just a man. Sheriff, you looking for a murderer? I'm always looking for a murderer. All right, then. Go ahead, Claire. Tell him. What? Danny, I... Go ahead. Has to come out sooner or later. Come on, young lady. If there's anything to tell, let's have it. Well... Well, that woman, my foster mother, murdered my father. What? Are you crazy? No. No, last night I heard a shot. And then this morning when I came down, she said he'd gone away. Out west. And he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't... But he did. I found the note he left on the old typewriter in the hall when I came down this morning. Hmm. Did you hear the shot, too? I... I don't know. I thought I'd dreamed it. She heard it all right. She killed him. Danny and I just found the body buried up in the woods. What? Oh, no. No! All right. Keep her covered, Al. Wait a minute, officer. If this woman had murdered her husband, why did she take the chance of giving me a room tonight? Knowing that I might learn something. Why wouldn't she have run away? Or killed the girl, too, to cover up? But, Danny... On the other hand, Claire here never once mentioned going to the police about the murder. She was willing to run away with me a few minutes ago. Even though she thought I was a murderer. And she knew exactly where the body was buried. She could have written the note to her mother. Danny. Danny, you mean you think I... Yes, I do. Officer, this is the woman you want. She murdered her foster father. <laughs> Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's tale. 
Meantime, because yesterday marked the opening of a six weeks drive to check auto brakes, sponsored by the International Association of Chiefs of Police, Signal Oil Company believes you'll want full information on just what this drive means to you. With today's cars averaging seven years old, faulty brakes are threatening to increase America's already large number of traffic accidents, which kill over 20,000 men, women, and children per year, injure another 800,000, and cost a billion and a quarter dollars. What's more, when a car is damaged or wrecked in an accident today, parts are often not available to repair it, and there are no new cars to replace it. So it means an even further strain on the transportation America must have to see us through the war. That's why traffic officers in every state plan to check every car involved in a moving traffic violation or accident. So the time to have the safety of your brakes checked by a competent brake expert is now. Your cooperation in this brake drive may prevent an accident that could cost you your car or your life. And now, back to the whistler. Well, Danny turned out to be quite a detective, didn't he? He saw through Claire all the time and figured the whole thing out. But wait, did he? Well, not exactly. Because, you see, when they dug up the grave at the edge of the woods, they found Mr. Monroe's clothes. But the body was someone else's. In fact, when the police identified it, it was the body of Killer Carter. Yes, Killer Carter escaped convict. And when they'd put out a dragnet and caught up with Claire's very much alive foster father, they got the whole story. Danny had figured it exactly right once. Killer Carter had stopped at the tourist home late that night. Neither Claire nor her foster mother knew about it. When the old man started to pull his usual robbery, Carter caught him. In the struggle, Carter was shot and killed in self-defense. But not knowing who his victim was, Mr. Monroe got scared, buried him after changing clothes with him, wrote the note to his wife, and took off in Carter's stolen car. Knowing nothing of Carter's presence in the house, Claire had suspected her mother, and Mrs. Monroe had suspected Claire of murdering a man who wasn't dead and was a fugitive from a crime that wasn't a crime in the police book. The killing of an escaped convict in self-defense. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program, directed by George W. Allen with story by John Hayes, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking and suggesting you let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.